What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And this episode is recapping and reviewing Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 1. Girl, bye. Oh my god, we're back. Yes, guys, don't forget, stick around for the ending of the podcast because we are going to go through our best moments, our MVPs, our LVPs of the episode. Um, and don't forget to watch our reaction video to the promo for next week's episode and that video is available on our youtube channel so go and check that out and as always to our continuing listeners and our brand new ones thank you for joining us don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel let's get into the episode y'all it's uh, it's been like two years so yeah <laughs> let's really get into it so take it back yeah. you know it's really funny like we've had a, so much growth like in the two-year span it's that crazy. game of thrones has been gone recap rewind has like elevated yeah. to like another level so like welcome to the new version of game of thrones recap it's rewind. so true and like we if you guys don't know like we honestly started off with game of thrones like one of our first podcasts yeah. ever was the game of thrones i believe season six and it's like what got us our- kicked off of YouTube for the first time. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> because our of copyright. Graphics, our sound is so yeah. different. Like we were just starting yeah. out. So it's really crazy to come back two years later. We're fully grown, recap rewind dragons. Um yeah. and like now we're like <laughs> recapping Game of Thrones final season. And I'm so excited Holy to do this. Holy crap. With you. This isn't going to be like a scene to scene recap because we no. really wanted to like talk to each other and like discuss like the major points of the episode. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's start from the top, which is Let's the- start from the top. It's the opening, opening credits. credits. Crazy yes. new opening credits. I was like, I can't Crazy. believe it took them eight seasons to like give us a brand new credit scene. I know that it changes. Like I know that it has changed Every in the past, season. but yeah. normally it like maintains throughout the season like the same credit scene, even though there's like a, a few alterations. But this one was like so different. Like literally the ring around the sun, there's like three sigils left. Like there's nothing yeah. left. And it like was crazy. Right from the top, it's like the wall is gone, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it was really cool because like apparently they premiered this like premiere to like a bunch of like I guess like the people that work on it, like the production crew, and they uh-huh. didn't even know that there was gonna be a new intro. So like everyone was oh. gagged when like they saw it. They're like, "What?" That's so like, cool. I guess like just the inside editor editing team like worked on it, so like no one right. else knew. I wonder if they're but, gonna yeah. do that for like every episode because there's only six I don't episodes. Because they like, highlighted one a, place, like the in snow this is epi- gonna keep moving, right? Like yeah, the, the yeah. ice is gonna keep moving. It's gonna like let us know like what's uh, what's going on. That'd be really um, cool if they like update us, like weather forecast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it looked amazing. I was so excited. I was screaming at my tel- like television the entire time. Um, but this was like the best opening credits I've ever seen. And I was just so excited. Yeah. Um, but this story, like basically what we're going to talk about is John returning to Winterfell with uh, his girl, Daenerys Storm. Daenerys. Yeah. Um, and like this is and- really like the biggest, you know, kind of point of the episode. And like, yeah what we want to talk about we know it kind of like goes throughout the entire episode but we're going to talk about it all right here in the beginning right um because there's a lot to cover off so yes mm-hmm. first scene is the opening sequence right and right. it kind of throws it back to like the pilot episode where we see um yeah. Arya running around like winterfell and like she's waiting for like like robert Baratheon like to come through and like, right but now it's like another kid yeah it's like, it show it's it yeah is. Exactly. And it's kind of like following them going through the crowd and then climbing up a tree, which I guess is also a throwback to, you know, Bran and how mm-hmm. he fell out that tower or whatever. But, you know, the, the, there's... the shots were just amazing, like in terms of yeah. like the like aerials, they really yeah. allowed you to see kind of where Winterfell is and like the entire, like, I guess, town. Yeah. They had some really, really cool, like, aerial shots, especially from, like, the dragon's perspective. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, it was really so cool. So they it was arrived, really cool to like, see. Danny and John. And Danny and John, they return to Winterfell. And right at the at the start, Arya is kind of lurking on the side tip. Like, she's not, jo- she's not meeting him at the gates like everybody else in the family, which I thought was she's kind lurking. of weird. But- it was weird, yeah. But yeah. it was definitely like expected, kind of out of Arya, just because she is Arya, and at this point I she's understood. like a ninja. I understood why she they had to do it in terms of like a production thing because I think that like she deserved a more like isolated reunion with John and I don't think she would have got that if she was like standing beside Sansa and like everyone You're else. Right. That's a good. So point. like they had to like force her like to come see him like after like at the train. Right. You know? That's true. 
Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So they're all kind of rolling up and um, all the northerners are like basically giving like throwing like eye shade at everybody. Like like no one is like, smiling. Like <laughs> no one's smiling. Daenerys is getting shade. Like our girl Masande is getting some like racism shade, like which I was like. Yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, you're in the north. Like there is probably. <laughs> yeah, which is like no technically like the north. opposite. It'd be like yeah. if you're in the south. Exactly. So you can just tell that everybody's very skeptical about everything. And that's the whole theme of the like what's going on in Winterfell. He returns with Danny, this like, you know, this dragon queen. And the, you know, all the houses who banded behind him are starting to lose faith in him because they, you know, they banded together because he claimed himself as king of the north and they wanted him to stay the king of the, king of the north. But now he's bent the knee to Daenerys and it's a huge, mm -hmm. it's a huge huge thing for them mm -hmm. um but on the higher tip the entire time this episode was going on i was like i don't care about anything there's fucking dead people coming like yeah like wasn't yeah, that like your whole feeling the entire episode definitely and i felt like some parts definitely were a little petty and like childish yeah, that i think i could have seen like seasons ago but i also understand that like it's only happening now because we're finally seeing these characters and like in the same place so I'm like, eh, okay, fine, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Like, I'll buy it. So one it's of the true. interesting things too is that just to kind of round up like what happens with John at Winterfell, um, Varys, Davos, and Tyrion propose a proposal, which basically like they basically want like John to propose to Danny, right? Yeah. To yeah. kind of get the Northerners like hyped up again to be like, yeah, it's like they stand united, like they're married now, like let's all like be like for one like team, you know? Right. So do you see one that happening? I do see that happening 100%. I just feel like it it's it's something that we've all, all predicted from the beginning. They're already in love with each other. So, I can definitely see it happening. However, that being said, and now that we're talking about it, considering it's being proposed, like it's pro like, you know, Game of Thrones style, it's probably not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like I just feel like do we even have time for all of this? Like there's yeah. five episodes left. <laughs> like, there's do literally we even have five time episodes. for a wedding? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that we're going to see. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that we're going to see all of those <laughs> things. But I definitely think that there's going to be a, like maybe an epilogue like that union. shows them getting married or something. If it even gets there. No, like, that's I don't the think. Thing. Like, honestly, that's what I don't I mean. think it's going to get there. Now that, it's, now that no. it's put up to this point where everything is, um, you know, it's not really... Uh, it's been proposed. I worry because I never really trust what's going on in Game of Thrones when it comes to that kind of shit. But anyway, um, so yeah, the proposal. But the one thing that we really quickly want to talk about is the last time we taught we saw Tyrion, he was lurking in on Danny and John, and now that he's like a part of this proposal conversation, are we gonna go back to that moment on the ship where he was looking yes. like yes. very forebodingly? I and think what what's gonna happen is the proposal is going to be this idea that they're going to want, but I think she's going to get pregnant before, like, that entire conversation can even happen. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea of this child is going to have to be, like, the main issue they're going to have to solve, plus the idea that they're freaking aunt and, like, nephew. Right. So I think the proposal is going to be, like, this, they're going to want it, but, like, obviously there's not going to be any time for it, slash, like, do, do they even need a proposal if there's a baby involved, right? Because, like, then they're going to have to be together. Right, 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 right. I don't know how those marriages work back then. But anyway, like, we'll see how it all kind of plays out. But it'll be interesting to see it when that comes back around with Tyrion. Um, yeah. so, so one of the big things that happened with Danny uh, is also her dragons are not eating enough food because they just don't like the North for whatever reason. Yeah. It's too cold. So cowed. I was like, oh, cool. I'm like, they're going to go. And like, so Danny takes John like to the dragons and they're like, Mah! they're like, we're hungry still. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. oh, like, where are they going to go? Like, they're going to go to, like, the south, like, for a vacation. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. So, like, we finally get this, like, really, really iconic scene. Like, everyone wants to see it. John finally gets to ride, like, Rhaegal, which is, like, the name of his father, obviously. Like, this um, was a major moment. I don't know how you felt about it, but I, like, lost my mind. While I love was... the way they shot it. I, I was, I felt like I was on a roller coaster. I was like, oh, my God. Like, my yeah, stomach I was, was like, dropping. This should be, like, a like a ride at Universal but yeah it was crazy. really no it was really cool to see and I think it was a really amazing moment because we did talk about it in our promo reaction like video how you know he'll be riding Rhaegal which is the guy that is named like you know that's his father essentially um so 
it's kind of very symbolic. And at the same time, there was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of notes where people say that the dragons are not ridden by anybody but the Targaryens. So that was a big, like, symbolic moment for them to, you know, show that on the very first episode. I did not think it was going to happen in the first episode. I thought it was going to be, like, maybe they're going to warm up to each other and then they're going to, like, happen. But he was, well, like, writing that his... shit like he was a natural. Yeah, like... but he's already had his moment with the dragon, like, the introduction and stuff. So True, last I season. think it only makes sense, yeah, like, for him to, like, hop on it. And she even said, she's like, you don't know until you get on it. Like, right. Like no one's ever tried to get on it because everyone's, like, freaking scared shitless. So... Yeah. No one really knows how to ride it. But yeah, no, it was a really cool scene. I, I really liked it. So they're flying around. It's kind of amazing. And uh, they land in this area where there's like a waterfall, um, kind of hot springs moment, like a spa day moment. Yeah. And they're, then you realize that they just basically like disappeared so they can fuck each yeah, other. Yeah. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> like, like, so the dragons didn't get more food. You guys didn't go to the south. You're still yeah. in the cold. Like, there's still cheese, the dragons. Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. I was like, you made them fly all the way over here. There's like, they're not even fishing or like nothing. Like, you brought them to a waterfall so you guys can fuck each other. She's like, literally, she like she lands the dragon. She sees the waterfall. She's like, hey, we could like stay here forever, you know? I'm like, what He's about like, the dragons? True. I'm like, what? What just happened? Also, like, what is John's situation with the fact that he keeps ends up ending up in waterfalls? Like, fucking Egret yeah. in a hot yeah. spring. Now it's like yeah. fucking Danny in the hot spring. Like, it was Jesus. hot, though. It was hot. The way he grabbed her was hot, for sure. It was very beautiful. I was like, there was a little level of cheese to it for sure but at the oh, same time sure. i was like so into it because i was like guys for one i was just clapping the entire time but it was just cool to see these guys because you forget that they're now in love they're in that moment where they're like newly in love with each other and it's a secret relationship mm -hmm. too so it's, it's kind of cool to see them like falling in love with each other and having these moments so uh, on the yeah, flip side on the flip side, do you feel like she's going to start neglecting her dragons? Because, like, she's so in love with the dick and, like, she needs to, like, be with him all the time? <laughs> Honestly, like, I... kind of feel like that's <laughs> happening already. <laughs> well, it was a really funny moment where they, like, cut to, like, you know, Drogon kind of, like, glaring at them while they were <laughs> yeah. making out. It was, like, a very but it was almost for like the dragons. It was almost like the dragon was saying, like, dude, that's your nephew. Like, <laughs> chill. <laughs> chill out we know <laughs> the truth yeah, yeah i don't know it was really funny but it i i, I hope that that's not going to be the case but she doesn't seem like a very good mom in that particular regard like so she's not like things... let's go hunt <laughs> like she was yeah, just like let's mean. go like, fuck she, she didn't address the hunger issue like she just kind of left it <laughs> she got like her thirst on but like she didn't address their her fucking issue. dragons are still thirsty <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't no, know one we'll of the see. things i wanted to ask you and like when so when they do arrive like bren tells her tells D danny like by the way like the night king like turns your dragon into a zombie dragon and like right. they're using him now i felt like her reaction wasn't as dramatic as i wanted it to be she was kind of like uh like her eyes kind of like grow bigger but then that's it like that's all she really <laughs> does and then she goes and like has sex with john so i was like what are you even upset well, for for one, I want to just talk about Bran on a general level. The fact that they heard this news as soon as they walked in and they're like, oh, we have <laughs> time best. to go fuck at a waterfall. Like, bro, there's yeah. dead people coming. There's a dra dead dragon coming. Like, guys, all hands on deck. Like, don't touch each other. Go touch other things like weapons. Like, we got to get this shit done. Okay, like, so back to Winterfell, right? So back they, to Winterfell. They're, they're done having sex. They got back. Finally, whatever. Yeah. It's like the end of the episode basically now. Yeah. And obviously it was expected i felt like i was waiting for it the moment where like john finds out about like his his real parents right right yes so it kind of all starts with sam the the one big thing that happens is danny sees him in the library just like studying or whatever and sam goes up to him and he's like hey, hey queen whatever and she thanks him for saving jorah's life because he does at the citadel and then they continue talking and then he, she finds out his last name and then she's like, oh, P.S., I killed your dad and then I killed your brother. And Sam gets like really fucking sad and depressed yeah. about it. And I, first of all, was like, you didn't even fucking like your dad. He was a piece of shit to you. Why do you even care? And I know I'm probably going to get so much hate for this because no one that i saw like on any review so far has called this particular moment out but i think it's more than i think it's more than just it being his dad and brother like i think 
I think she claimed all these things that like she protects people and like she's for the people and she's for peace and like sh- she freaking like burned people. So I think it just kind of flips it on him and he's like, wait, like who is this girl though? Like, and why does John trust her? Like I thought she was like pure of heart and like she was all good. Clearly she's not, right? Right, right. But they can't expect this girl to be like this pure, I know. oh, I'm going to be a And that's why she didn't say sorry. Like, like, she saw him cry, like, getting upset, but she didn't yeah. say sorry. She didn't say, like, I'm, like, I fucked up. Like, she she stands by what she had to do because she was, she's queen and that's it. But, but at the yeah, same, he was just at the really, same time, like, like emotional. How she, she can't, like, take that shit back. She can't be like, oh, let me bring not. your fucking yeah, like, dad back to life. Like, anyway, I understood, I guess I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, like, bro, you shouldn't give a shit that much. Like, maybe your brother, but not your dad, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, that also was like, oh, now you have a castle. Like, you can live with Gilly now in, like, this big castle that's yours. Yeah, and I'm sure that's, yeah, maybe that's what's gonna happen. But anyway, so he gets not. cheese at this conversation, so, like, right. he runs out of the room, and then he sees Bran. Bran's just, like, lurking, like, in the courtyard the entire yeah. time. he's just, like, sitting and, there. yeah. And I think Sam, like, runs up to him and he's like, you need to tell him, like, right now. And yeah. Sam's like, you're his brother. Like, you should tell him. Like, why am I the one telling him right now? And but, uh, Bran's like, I'm not his brother. And I'm like, true. He's like, <laughs> so Sam's like, fuck. No <laughs> Sam's like, okay, I got to go tell him. So then, yeah. like, it cuts to John. He's in the tombs. He's like, whatever, like, brooding. And then um, Sam, like, walks in. He freaking falls on his face. Like, it was just, like, too many, like, <laughs> things happening. I'm like, can you just get to the conversation? Just get to the please? conversation. Yeah. <laughs> And it basically kind of just comes from, like, John being like, I don't even want this. Like, I don't even want to be king. Like, whatever. Like, I don't want to be on the throne. And he's like, what about, like, the Iron Throne of, like, all the realms? And he's like, huh? Yeah. And Sam basically (laughs) says, like, you're, like, you're the king, basically. You're the king. Your real name is, uh, like, you know, Aegon Targaryen. Targaryen. Like, your mom was actually Lyanna. Da-da-da-da. And John's like, what did you think about John's reaction as, like, his on his acting side? You know, I wasn't sure how they were going to take it. And I was, I didn't want to do the whole, oh, no, I don't believe you. I like the fact that he literally goes straight dead ass up to Sam, looks dead ass into his eyes and tries to figure out whether or not he's telling the truth I love, from that moment yeah. alone. Yeah, because I love that I didn't he brought want up to- Ned. I think it just shows like his loyalty to Ned. Like he was like, my dad would never lie to me. Like this That's guy was true. the most honorable person in the entire freaking kingdom. Like you're right. telling me he lied to me my entire life. And Sam's like, right. yeah, he did. <laughs> He's like, so, he, <laughs> he did. did. Like, he did to protect you, obviously. But like, yeah, he did. Yeah. Um. So it kind of leaves off at that moment, right? With him just kind of sitting with that information. Yeah, because now he's like, oh, shit. I got yeah. to tell my aunt. He's just got like, uh uh-oh. But I think there's a bigger conversation here and, the, and the, the fact that it's Sam saying, like, you gave up your crown to save your people. Would she do the same? Because he's, like, John is technically the king right now and yeah. Danny needs to bow down to him. So Sam is more like, uh, what are you going to do? Right. I don't know. I don't know. And so I'm going to pull this from a question that we got on social. By the way, guys, if you guys ever have any questions after an episode, make sure you guys tweet us or Instagram us and we'll talk about it in the podcast. But one of the big questions that we got was Jon Snow or Daenerys um, on the throne. Only one of them is going to make it to the end. Who will it be? Um, so I'm just going to throw that out to you right now. What do you think? Who do you I want don't think to be on I, the throne at this point? I don't think. I honestly feel like she's going to step down. I feel like she's going to have this baby. And, like, I don't think it's going to matter which one of them is on the Iron Throne. I think they're going to be together as, like, a team. And I think it's going to be him. But I think she's going to be, like, cool with it. Yeah. I'm well, hoping. for one, I th- <laughs> I'm hoping. for one, I don't like. I don't know why they're throwing this whole drama into yeah, the situation like, right now. Like, there's so many bigger things going on that he probably would still say to Sam, like, "I don't care about like the the North. I don't care exactly. about the Seven Kingdoms. Like, it doesn't matter to me still." Like, because he's been still- saying that. He said that all episode anyways. He was like, it doesn't matter about titles right now. Like, do you understand the world is going to f- end? Like, yeah. fuck titles. Like, who cares about the Iron Throne? But I, I guess the big thing that I do want to see is if there is going to be some sort of power struggle between the two of them. Like, if, you know, she decides to be like, I want to take my dragons here. And he's like, no, I'm the king now. You have to take the dragons here. You know, yes, like, if he says somebody, that, has to fo- somebody has to follow somebody, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah. And... Even though they're, even if they do rule as king and queen, they're not going to be equals. One of them is going to be like one thing, and the other one's going to do the other. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But at the same time, it to me right now it's irrelevant. I don't really care. Yeah. 
Um, I think it'll be really shitty. I'm like, you're saying that you don't mind if he's going to be on the throne. I don't think that it's fair that he wants to be, he ends up being on the throne. He never wanted this from the get go. No, but I think she's going to give it to him. Like, I think he's going to say, I don't want it. And she's going to say, you need to take it. Cause like, I want to be a mom or like, I want to do this with my life. (laughs) I honestly feel like her thing is going to switch to be doing something else. And she's not going to really, yeah. Like (laughs) not to say that, like a woman can't be queen. Of course she can be queen, but I honestly feel like he's the, he is the rightful heir he will be on the throne and i guess it will be an interesting yeah and i guess it'll be an interesting story to to tell you know that this was her whole goal this entire show and then finally she gets there and she's like all they really wanted was that exactly yeah (laughs) maybe maybe Oh, really okay, let's was move that. on. Let's John move on. Snow dick. Um, okay, moving on from their storyline. Um, if there's anything that we missed, guys, let us know. Um, and we'll talk about it in the next podcast. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about Sansa and her and power Danny. struggle, girl trouble. Did you Danny. expect them to have like as much drama as they did? One hundo. One hundo. Yeah, it's Sansa, Sansa. is <laughs> like... Sansa is like sketched out by everybody, including her own sister. So I wouldn't be surprised if she, you know, butt, butts heads with Danny. And yeah. Danny is a powerhouse, right? Like she's a force to be reckoned with. I so mean, she's, she, got- she's a powerhouse. But in that moment, in the first introduction, she really doesn't play the powerhouse at all. She lets John no. go up to his family. He introduces him like he hugs everyone. She's she's very back. And then he, she like slowly comes up and she's like, hey, girl, hey, like right. what a beautiful like house you have. She's like, wow, like whatever. <laughs> the North is like so sick. Like like she's really trying to step back a bit and not come in as like this like strong right. like figure. But That's Sansa's true. already like, bitch, I don't like you. She's like, who are you? Like your dad like killed like my whole family. Right. So there's obviously just like already tension there. Yeah. And John senses it from like the start. But the best part was like, yeah, like Sansa was like eyeing her up and down. <laughs> and then Bran's like, um, can we get back to business? He's like, yeah. it's like everybody he's chill like, the, the fuck world out. is ending. Yeah. So then it kind of like cuts back and forth. And and there's an interesting scene like inside, like in their little like town hall thing right. where like everyone's freaking out. Like the northerners are like, yo, like who the hell bends a knee to like a girl? Like what's going on? Whatever, whatever. Yeah. And Sansa's like only worry at that point is like how am i gonna feed everyone because <laughs> like now there's like totraki freaking- you know what's funny you mentioned it in our in the promo reaction too you're like how the fuck are they gonna feed yeah. all these people <laughs> and i'm like it's true you see this army coming That's through and about. she was like she was like yes we got the oats for like one tiny castle but the thing that kind of killed me in this whole thing like and even going back to sansa and her frustration with danny is like you know, they have a conversation later, like, between her and John, and he says, like, what did you, we need to win this war. What did you, I brought back a full army, yeah, yeah. two right. dragons, like, what else did you want from me? Like, we're not going to win this war. At the same time, these fucking houses have, like, ten people in them, and they're like, oh, please stay, we need your allegiance. Like, fuck these fucking guys who don't want to stick around. You have 20,000, like... So yeah. many people that she's bringing to the table. Why do you even care about who the Northerners other than their loyalty? Yeah. I understand the loyalty thing that needs to be like, you know, like be, it needs to like be there. But at the same time, right now, these small, tiny houses like the Umbers, the Castarks, who cares? They're like there's 10 people in those castles to begin with. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, and and it's right. Like I don't understand why like Sansa was so surprised that like everyone came because like he the point of it all was to like make connections for him to, to like, bring people to bring people back or like have a have a, like a next level army. So like I don't know why she was so shocked at that. But anyways, it led to a really funny scene because she was like, "What the f do dragons even eat?" And then like yeah. the camera like focuses on Khaleesi's face and she's like, "Whatever the f they want." Like it was just I was like hilarious. Durr. It was yeah, just it was like jokes. hilarious. Yeah, it was really. And funny, they're like, but... they're, yeah, they're both like low key throwing shade at each other, which is which is great to yeah. see. I still want to see like a really. I want to see their scenes together, like just on their own and like them yeah. having to work it out. Um, but because... then Sansa and John, they have a really good moment at the end where like she's like. John, like, what's going on? Like, what did you do? Um, and she calls him out on it too. She's like, "Did you bend the knee to save the North, or because you love her?" And I was and he's like, like, "Oh, oh shit!" Like she, he's like, it "I so can't quick. answer that right yeah. now." I, I plead <laughs> the like, fifth. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> can't answer. So yeah. 
Yeah, it's it it is interesting, but it's very true. And uh, this leads me leads us to like the next big reunion um, because it's reinforced by the second sister, Arya, when she sees John at the God's yes. Retreat. Yeah. So we'll talk through Arya's reunions because she has a few, but we'll talk about John's first because it's the yeah, most important. Yeah, the biggest one. Yeah. Um. So they're at the God's Tree, and John's just like staring into nothing, and I'm like, "You're not Bran. Relax." Yeah. And I'm like, Arya- "What do you have to look at?" <laughs> Like, that's the thing. These moments where he's, like, staring at the God of the like, why aren't you talking to your brother who knows literally everything? Like, Bran was so quiet yeah, in this like episode. it's like he was there, but he wasn't there. I'm like, can yeah. he just tell us what's going to happen? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he literally people. has all the spoilers. Fucking grill him. So, anyway, whatever. Arya shows up behind him like a ninja, and they have a really amazing moment where they hug each other, but right before they hug each other, they're kind of, like, lash... Like, you know, they're joking with each other a little bit. Like He's like... Oh, like look at your like look at your hair or something, and she was like, "Oh, how did you die?" And you came back to life, you know. Like they just had those moments, and they had a really emotional hug. I think which I was like, no! it was yeah. I wasn't as sad as I thought I was gonna be because like I thought I was gonna start bawling, but I actually was fine. I, I held it together. <laughs> Good um, job, girl. I think what's so amazing is that like she pulls out needle and he's like, holy shit, like you kept it this entire time. Like, yeah. and um, and it just took me back to like everything that they have been through from freaking sure. season one. And I'm like, holy shit, the journeys that these guys have been on. Like, how did they make it out alive? Like, honestly, it's actually insane. And I think just having that moment between the two, it took me back and and I needed that because I forgot. Like you forget after all these years of like waiting around for the next season, like, you know, yeah. It's been so long since they've seen each other. Like, and since episode one, gone through so much. Yeah, it was a that was it. it. Like, they only had one episode together. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's literally like such a short moment, and they had to maintain that like relationship this whole time. So seeing each other, she loves him like so much. Yeah, it was such a sweet moment. He says he's like, "What?" He's like, "You're sticking out for Sansa. Like, you're protecting her." She's like, "No, I'm protecting my family, just like she is, and you right. should too. Like, don't forget that you're part of this family. Don't forget that. Yeah, I yeah, hope you never forget so that. They're so strong. Ugh, I Wh- love them. Which is amazing because I think that is going to be his big struggle for the next little while is deciding whether or not it's like the the best thing for the family well, or the best thing Stark, for. Well, he's half Stark, half Targaryen. Like, he's yeah. caught in the effing middle. Like, literally, the struggle is real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. Um, moving on to the next boy that she hey. sees, Gendry. Hey, oh, I'm so excited. Boy, hey. Well, it's cute because she sees all these people in the line. Like when she's hiding yes. and lurking in the crowd, she sees the mountain and she yeah. sees, or no, yeah, the hound. Yeah, Sorry. she sees him. Yeah. She sees the hound and then she sees Gendry and she like just like smirk. She's like, ooh, ooh. And then she <laughs> finally sees them again. Um, like she actually like goes up to see him and the mountain when they're arguing. The mountain and the Gendry are arguing and she's like, shut the fuck up, boy. And then they both turn around. The hound sees him. Uh, sees I her love and he's, I love that his their lines to each other and like their dynamic is so fucked up. Like he Honestly. looks at her and he's cheese. He's like, "What the f?" Like you left me for dead. To and then she's like, "I stole your money first. Like she's like, she I, didn't I, even yeah." Care. She's like, "Yeah, I robbed you first though. Like fuck yeah. that. Like I don't even give a shit." And then whatever. Yeah. Like he's like, "Damn, you're a cold hearted bitch." Like whatever. He like walks away and then she yeah. like comes in on like Gendry and he was like so cute to her. Yeah. He kept calling her like so lady adorable. and like just flirting. I'm like, oh my God, I want a love story so hard. <laughs> this is gonna I be know. So like, cute. are they going to, are you going to see, I do you see so. them together at the I end of the I hope so. Of yes. I hope so. Because I do feel like she's cold hearted right now. And like, I feel like he's going to warm her heart like a little bit and yeah. like see like a next type of life. I feel like she's on this revenge tip, but like she can't be on it forever, you know? Right. I so don't anyways, know, man. So she- I, I, I don't believe in these har- these love stories in season eight. Like, I feel like everyone's yeah. going to die. I don't know if they'll make it to the end, but, like, I hope, like, they kiss at least once. Like, geez, come on. I feel like he's going to turn into a White Walker. <gasps> oh, my God. Jeez. <laughs> and she's going to have to, like, run. Like, remember in the trailer when she's running away from somebody? Maybe it's him. I don't know. Either way, oh I feel God. like Gendry is putting in so much effing work building this fucking, like, dragon glass. Like, <laughs> once true. I saw him working, I'm like, yo, they have a chance to, to beat, like, the White Walkers. Yeah. Like, he's literally, like, putting in work. He's putting like, in work. I'm so impressed by this man who, like, dipped for eight seasons, basically, like, <laughs> just to craft the show and just came he back came- and he was so lit. He's like the most important person right yeah, now. Yeah, he's literally so, the most important person. He's literally putting an army together. Yeah. So, yeah, so they have a conversation. She asked him to make something small for him. And he's like, okay, lady. And she was like, 
I'll see you later, boy. And yeah, it was he's really like, cool. I love I how he's it. like, you sound like the rich girls. And, and she's like, you don't know any other rich girls. Like, calm down. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was just so cute. So I cute. love I their relationship. Yeah. yeah. I definitely am down for them to, to for get sure. together. But sure. I feel like one of them is going to die. Okay, let's um, get to King's Landing because this bitch is crazy. So, uh, <laughs> 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 so literally Cersei's first line of the entire final season, Kyburn comes up to her. He's yeah. like, my queen, the wall is shattered and the White Walkers are, are coming down. She's like, good. I'm like, yeah. honestly, like no other line could be suited like, for Cersei. Like, <laughs> nothing has changed. Nothing changed. Nothing, nothing changes has changed. this bitch. Nothing. Yeah, so nothing's changed. we do see that like she's looking on the horizon, like to the water and like the ships, yeah. like Greyjoy's ships are like back and he's right. like brought in like the, um what, what was it? The, the, golden, I, company. the golden Company. Yeah. Yeah. And like there's like this next like really hot like um Strickland. What's his name? Captain Strickland, Commander or Strickland, or something. Yeah, yeah. He was freaking hot. Um, yeah, he was cute. But my question to you and like to our listeners, real quick, is that like I thought the Lannisters had no more money, and they owed a bunch so, of money to the bank. So like, how did they afford to hire these mercenaries? So they did, but I think uh, like way back, I think it was last season or the season before, she has a conversation with Iron Bank and she persuades them to give them another chance because she's like, oh, you know, okay. the Lannisters always pay their debt. She was like, we just need your army to win and then we'll give you all of the money oh back because we're going to conquer what shit. Hell? Yeah, and he like kind of believed thing. her. Yeah. So, so that was the big conversation. So Euron's mission, I guess, was to bring like the, the Golden Company like right. to Cersei and he did via ships and yeah. she's like where's my elephants and he's like oh sorry boo like we couldn't like transport the elephants okay. she's like really Whoa. <laughs> she was so cheesed she brought up the elephants once and then she brought <laughs> yeah. them up after sex I was like girl she you were like, bent like, up he, about the he elephants he better go and get the elephants like honestly he needs to go get it <laughs> he was, like, she was so cheesed I'm like girl relax it's elephants why are you so angry yeah. so he um, basically tries to like fuck her right away and she friend zones yeah. him like real hard she's like thank you for your services you've been such an amazing friend to me and like goodbye i'll like text you later and he's like no bitch <laughs> he's like you are being so cold like yeah. where's like the sex um and like the marriage and she's like no i'll marry you like once the war is done and he's like no he's like wars take like years he's like i ain't waiting that long and then yeah. she gets up to like leave and then he kind of like just kind of gets into it he's like you can't do this or he threatens her and i guess right. she does need his army she needs his people like she knows that she can't do this without him so i guess she turns around and she's like wink wink like calm i think also the in the moment she she realizes how alone she is right like she realizes there's so no one else around do you think it was her. that or do you think it was because like she knows she needs him I think he army. says, I don't remember exactly what he says, but I think he does say something along the lines of like the fact that she's basically like by herself and there's nobody else around her. And I think she that she does take that into note and she's like, you know what? Why not just get with this guy who really wants my fucking yeah. vagina right now and let's just do this. Whatever. Vagine. Vagine. Yeah. So they, um, they like go back and they like they fuck whatever. And yeah. he was like, their dynamic is really cool. It's and I hate and I hate that it's happening so late in the game when there's like only five episodes left to like you know explore. But he's yeah. so cocky and he's so like I'm gonna put a prince in your stomach and I'm gonna fuck you <laughs> until like you're satisfied and like she's like whoa like this is like so confident like it's like yeah like do you see something happening between the two of them? Do you see her having feelings for him or is it just like she just wants to like fake the pregnancy kind of thing? You know I do kind of see it happening. But, like, to your point, I feel like it's coming so late and she's so hard to read that, like, it's hard. Like, she's been in love with her brother for this entire show. So for her to, like, now go to this next guy and fall in love with him, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe she's just using him because she uses everybody. But at the same time, there was something there. She does admit yeah. that they have good chemistry and she does like him to a degree. Um, so I can definitely see it. But you I know don't what? know. I, I really think and I don't want to speculate yet, but I really think Cersei's like death is going to come in this moment of like we sort of see her turning into this better person or I feel like we're going to get an inkling Almost of this change, there, yeah. Cersei. And we're like, oh my God, like you're on the brink and then she dies. And it's like this, most, like dies. the most tragic way of her death or. Right. So I feel like it's going to happen that way. Yeah. I, I can see we'll that see. happening we'll that see. way. Um, so the next big thing that we want to talk about is Theon saving Yara, which was like yeah. the fastest saving <laughs> so ever. So fast. 
Like last season, it took them like seven years to save one person. Now it's like yeah. half an like yeah. half a second. And it was very so, like stealth. It was very like quiet. He like had yeah. arrows. He's like shoo, shoo, shoo. he got on the boat. He like killed everyone and like yeah. saved his sister. I was like, okay. And like I like I didn't even know it was a part of the storyline. I was like, what the Did fuck is happening? Did you feel like it was unnecessary? Because I felt like it was a little extra. Well, I think it's just extra because right now they're not uh, important to the story, but, then but they the, will be. I'm sure they will. But then in be. the end, she says, she's like, thanks for saving me, bro. Like, come, like, let's like do something. He's like, no, I got to go back to the Stark. So I, I'm like, so wait, what's the point? Like, is she going to be on her own on a ship and he's going to be like with the Stark? No, well, she she said that she's going to like set up ship, like set up shop back at the Iron Islands because yeah. the brother, the like the uncle is now, Euron is gone. Uh, so oh, no okay. one's protecting the Iron the Island. Island. So she's like... Let's take it back over. Okay. I can reign. And then if anything, if shit goes down in Winterfell, like at least the you island is like prepared. Okay. Okay. But then Theon's like, I want to like fight for the Starks. Like it's my fam. Yeah. And so that's when they separate. And it was a really cute moment. Yeah. I just don't know what um, they're going to do with her story, especially. And like even like maybe he'll he'll probably die for like saving someone. But like. Yeah. Like she's he'll so probably at try point. to save like Sansa Bren. again, and then he'll like die or something. Yeah, or he'll save. Oh, Bren maybe or he'll something. die he'll by Bran. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We'll see. But yeah, I don't see Theon like making it to the end of the show. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, not at all, not at all. Um, and they do like the what is dead is will never die. And the one thing really quickly I'm gonna say is I never th- like I never listened to like their their slogan and s- seen like such a direct parallel to the walk like the wa- White Walkers. Like, oh, for sure. Like, what is dead will, may never die. Like, I'm like, they're fucking, they are dead people. Yeah. Anyway, side Yeah. Note. And she even says, she's like, what is dead may never die, but like, go kill those bastards. Like, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was cute. It was cute. I was like, true. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the next big thing that happens is the Umber's uh, ancestral home mm-hmm. it is now it's overrun, kind of the most, right? It's, yeah. And it's high, it's the highest north, I think, uh, like, Winterfell home. So like, Winterfell's a little bit Castle more Black? south. Yeah. South of Castle Black, but way north of Winterfell, apparently. Right. So, um, John at one point says, or no, I think Sansa says, because he's like, we need, like, h- horses to get down here. And so she's like, okay, well, go back to your home and wait for us and we'll bring some people for you. So they don't, I guess they don't hear back from him. And the place is called The Last Hearth. They don't hear back from him. So Tormund and... The blady guy and like everybody just kind of goes up there, or I don't know if they go. No, up they there didn't go with... up there because they were already at Castle Black, so they were making. So their they're way coming south. back down. Yeah, they're, they're just coming making back their way down back to Winterville. So I guess got they it, like got it, got it, got it. went through that castle and they noticed that like it was overrun. It was such right. a sick scene to watch because it was really so fucking scary. terrifying. Um, yeah, but in the end, they they see um what was his name um like what was his like, King Umber Lord I don't Umber know, Lord Umber, Lord Umber? Like, yeah it's like Lord the kid Umber. right. And like he's Ned, hanging. I think his name is Ned. Yeah. He's hanging on like the wall in like the circular like pattern that the White Walkers make, like the Night King makes. Yeah. Um, and then like it, he basically he's still alive, but he's like, a zombie, obviously. That was so scary. I was so like, ah! scary. <laughs> Ugh, it was terrifying. And then they like and light right him at the end fire. of the episode too. I was like, fuck. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, they burn him and then they're like, oh shit, that means that the White Walkers are on their way down. Like the Night King right? is dropping clues, basically saying like, yeah. y'all better hurry up because I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm coming through. Yeah. Um, so, so the next episode th- is going to be the, the battle. battle of Winterfell. Yeah. Thank God. Because, well, for one, oh, I thought yeah. it was going to be this episode because I'm like, y'all no. don't have enough time. But <laughs> yeah. It's it's going to be huge. It's going to yeah. be the episode of episodes. Oh, and I don't so know what's going to happen. Everyone's I feel gonna like die. we're going to lose people. Everyone's going to die. <laughs> oh, God. It's going to be crazy. Um, Final moments that we want to talk moment. about. Before we go to this final, final moment. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was Cersei asks Bronn to basically assassinate Jamie and Tyrion. Yes. She doesn't tell, she doesn't ask. She basically tells him like he's got to go. So fun right? fact, fun fact. And I just found this out yesterday. Fun fact about Cersei, the actress, Cersei, like Lena Headey, and then like the actor that plays Bronn, they were apparently dating years ago. And in their contract, it apparently says they can no longer have scenes together. Like they can't Ooh. have scenes together. So the fact that you see Kyburn coming up to Bronn and saying this to him, I'm like, it totally makes sense that Cersei's wow. not even like telling him herself. She got freaking Kyburn to say it. Yeah. And so basically Kyburn's like, 
take this freaking arrow that like your brother used to kill your dad and like you're gonna go like that they Damn. use i would have loved to see that scene yeah right like, but that would have been fucking it's in their tense. contract yeah Damn. That, yeah who knows what the fuck so, happened between the two of them so do you think that braun's gonna go out there and fucking Honestly, kill these people I don't know. I feel like there's such a big focus on Braun and his character. I feel like in the end, he's going to be like, I'm not killing the two brothers. Like, yeah. why does he why does he care? Like, he's had all the money. He's had all the, like the girls. Like, I feel like at this point, he's going to be like, for what? Why am I doing this for Cersei? Like, who cares? Yeah. It just sucks that they kind of he was such a cool character to watch. And yeah. then it ended up he ended up being like such a such sellout. A so yeah. now I'm like, Ugh, what is your redeeming moment going to be? He has to have know. something. He has to redeem himself somehow. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Apparently um, that scene though that that happens in the brothel, apparently that was shot l- for last season's finale and they uh-huh. never put it in for that episode. They they put it in this episode. So oh, it was like already pre-taped from like last season. It did feel out of place, I will say yeah, that. Yeah. It did feel out of place cuz yeah. I'm like where's Bron anyway and who cares? Yeah, exactly. Um so the final moment that we see, uh, we realize now why Bran has been sitting out in the fucking cold <laughs> He's the entire waiting for that guy. Day. <laughs> Um, somebody rolls up during the day and it's sure enough, Jamie, Jamie arrives Lister. at fucking Winterfell and it's the Back final again. scene. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because it was crazy to see it. I know. Um, and what did you think? Like for one, the one thing that you have to note is like, this is a direct parallel to the way that episode one, season one ended. Yeah. So the pilot um, episode ends with Jamie pushing Bran out out the window and this episode ends with like jamie kind of looking he's like assessing winterfell the courtyard and bran already sees him obviously and then jamie's eyes like his the actor that plays jamie is amazing because i felt every ounce of pain in his eyes like when he looked at bran he saw him in the wheelchair he saw they they like locked eyes and i could i almost started to cry i was like i don't know why it was just so emotional his face was like all the pain that he's caused, it like came on top of Jamie. Like you could just feel it, you know? For sure. And for sure. I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I wrote it in the notes. Anyways, we'll talk about it after, but it's a, him pushing brand really started a lot of the story. So yeah, like it's taking us back true. to that moment. It was really like, but powerful. I feel like at the end of the day, brand's going to basically be like, it was my destiny. And yeah. Yeah. I don't think here. he like, I don't think he's cheese at him. I think he knows that this was all meant to be, but I think it's more yeah. for like Jamie to see that, like what the fuck he did. And like, it's what true. he was doing for Cersei all those years, you know? It's so true. He pushed him him out of the window because of Because of her, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, so that's the end of the episode. But before we finish it off, I just wanted a few things to cover off really quickly. There are two mentionable reunions uh, that we, I just want to cover off really quickly. One is between Sansa and Tyrion, who we didn't see together since the Red... We- or not the Red Wedding, but Joffrey's Wedding. Um what did you think of that quick moment where they have it all um, it was on cute. top of the, the I felt like Sansa thing. was being like really crusty to him. Like I don't think she needs to she be that was. rude. Cause like he never did anything to her. She's the one that like left him and like ran away and like almost got him killed. Um yeah. but here's the thing with Tyrion, and he kinda let me down this episode and I'll talk about it later too. But like the way he was like, ha ha ha, like Cersei's coming with her army, like she's gonna save us. And Sansa's like, bitch, what? Like, you're dumb. Like, she's like, I thought yeah. you were way smarter than that. She's like, you think you're gonna it's trust true. your sister now, eight seasons later? So that was kind so of true. weird that like Sansa was schooling him. Um, but otherwise yeah. I liked it. Do you believe him? Do you do you be- like do you believe that he really does feel that way? Or does he is yeah, he starting to realize that he might have gotten tricked? Oh, I think he knows that he got tri- tricked now, for sure. When she said it, his face was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. She's like, he's like, if this 17-year-old girl can tell me that I'm Seriously. an idiot, then I'm probably an idiot. <laughs> um, and the other big reunion, we have talked about it already, but John and Sam seeing each other for the first time in a long time. It was yeah. cute. Yeah, cute. Cool. Cute. Um, all right. Uh, do we have any other big... So, okay, this big... is my question to you, and I kind of, like, have a quick discussion about it. Um, we're talking about this potential power struggle between Danny and John, right? Uh-huh. But here's the thing. Once John tells Danny, like, hey, we're related, I don't think it benefits the kingdom and either one of them for them to say it to everyone else. Like, maybe they should just keep pretending that, like, John is still a Stark. Right. I, I guess I, won't agree, I agree with you, but I do feel that if it does get out, which like, you know, if you look at the secret between the Lannister family and like Joffrey being an illegitimate child, like 
it does create discord in the in the kingdom. For sure. So if I they just, if they don't say it, then I don't know what the like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I don't see I a northerner it, standing behind two Targaryens. Like that's like too much for that's them. That's fair. That's fair. But I feel like they've already been betrayed by him like a hundred times, and like who cares? Like that's the thing. At the end of the day, yes, the politics and the drama and all that kind of stuff is important. But y'all, there's fucking dead people coming down, coming through, and yeah. that's always been the whole big thing with this show. Is you know, there's always like these little tiny dramas here and there. But at the end of the day, like there's fucking dead people. Like yeah, fucking there's dead people coming down, and Cersei's like pissed off about elephants like girl get your priorities straight like there's so many little things that happen this episode that remind you that there's still a lot of characters that don't see the bigger picture and while this whole like you know throwing this at the very end of the se- series like having this like oh who's gonna like be the the winner at the end of it all like yeah it is important but it's not important right now so like let's talk about it later <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah for sure um also, what else? Um, Brienne was missing. Was she supposed to be at Winterfell? True. Because I was where like, girl, uh, why were you not like when everyone walked in? She was definitely missing. Um, yeah. They didn't pay her. They, was she a, <laughs> they definitely like, didn't what? pay her for sure. <laughs> um, Jorah Mormont, that's, I guess, is related to Liana Mormont. The little girl. Oh, true. So like, I feel like they should Bear have a, Island. Yeah, they should have like a moment, be like, "Hey, yo, we're fam. Like, let's do this." That was like she's missing. Gonna be too, like you, like. Yeah. yeah, she's gonna like. But yeah. Hate on him. Otherwise, sick um, episode. And I think one final question that we got from social, like I said, guys, if you guys have any during the episode, after the episode, make sure you guys tweet us or Instagram us uh, so we can talk about it. Uh, someone asked, when does Sansa kill Cersei? Do you see that happening? No. Um, at all? No. I think her brothers are going to have to kill her or like something. That's like going to that. be the big moment? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know who's going to be the person because I think there's a lot of people who deserve to kill Cersei. Yeah. And like she didn't do that much to Sansa. Like I feel like Ramsay did she way. Did a lot. No, I feel like Ramsay did way more to Sansa than like Cersei True. ever did. Good. So I feel like she Sansa already got her revenge against like that person, you know? Whereas like yeah. Cersei has other enemies. Like I feel like her brother's killing her is way more like, you know, iconic. Yeah. It'll be iconic yeah. if that's the case. If Sansa even right, makes guys. it, because she might not even make it out of the Battle of Winterfell. So True, true. R.I.P. We'll see. Let's talk about our recap roundups. Recap roundups. Best, best moment. moment. My okay, so my best moment, I got two moments. So cinematically, okay. the dragon flying with John was like 100% hands down best moment. Like I felt like Coolest, I was on an effing yeah. roller coaster, especially when like the dragon like drops down and like my stomach yeah. literally went up like the feeling that you're like on a roller coaster. <laughs> it was so like the way they shot it was beautiful. Um but yeah. emotionally, I'm going to have to say like when Jamie sees Brent just because of everything I said before. I yeah, think, like, huge, even the actor, moment. like, he just got me. His eyes, the way, like, you could just see the disappointment in himself and, like, the sadness yeah. that he's going to feel seeing this kid in a wheelchair. And, like, he just knows, yeah. like, he fucked everything up. So it was just, it was a Progress. big moment, in my opinion. For sure. Um, my best moment, you've already said one of them. One of them was Danny and John flying the dragons because I thought it was amazing. Um, but outside of that, I think John seeing Arya for the first time, just because sure. I was waiting for that for, for sure. so long. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for two years. plus years for that. <laughs> like, fuck. And Seven years. it was years. a really good moment to see. <laughs> Goddamn. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really cute. I loved it. WTF, WTF moment. moment. Was it WTF moment? My WTF moment, I think, is going to go to Cersei let, letting, like, Euron get the V. Because I was just like... Oh, True. oh, we're doing this now. Okay, cool. <laughs> like it was just like <laughs> I thought she was like dipping to like go back to her room, but like she's like wink, wink, like come through. I'm like, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm like, okay. Um, my WTF moment is gonna go to Sam crying over his daddy because I was like, boy, yes. bye. <laughs> You're like, I was like, why? what the fuck? Are-? <laughs> like, who cares? I know. I was, I was kind of shocked. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Why do you even give a shit? Like, it's not a big deal. Um, so that was my WTF moment. MVP. MVP. Who's your MVP? My MVP is going to go to Gendry because I honestly think like he's working <laughs> so hard to like push these like dragon glass weapons it's out. It's true. And I honestly, he's actually, it, was, like, doing work. it was the first time where I looked at them and I'm like, I think they're going to win. Like they could win with this because yeah. they have a standing chance now. Like everyone's going to be equipped properly and like, like heavily like armed. So like it's a good thing. True, true. Um, and good Sansa, point. just because I think Sansa was just serving up the sass and like I effing loved it. It was so amazing. So. <laughs> MVPs. I love Sansa. 
my MVP is gonna go to Arya, and I think it's just because she is staying true to like like typical Arya who she is right now she's staying out of the trouble of it all but she's also very aware of what's going on in the castle she's all about being a Stark and she's trying to remind everybody about like you know maintaining that you know the family shit with with her and John. um and I loved her a moment with uh her and Gendry too I thought it was really cute LVP my LVP is gonna go to Bran cause I just feel like he's not gonna be like I just feel that he didn't say what he needed to say and he didn't like push everybody to get their shit together and he's just been lurking this whole time waiting for Jamie when he should be saying exactly what to do next. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely just lurking and like it it sucks knowing that like one character knows how everything's gonna end, but like he's yeah. not saying anything. <laughs> I guess it's the writers and how they're going to pace it out, but I was just annoyed that, like, they have this literal, like, ace card, this joker card, and they're not even using it. Like, nah, whatever. My LVP is going to go to Tyrion, and like I said, I felt like he was so naive in all of this. Like, you know your sister more than anyone should. Like, you should know her the most, and, like, the fact that you were like, ah, she's going to bring her army and help us. Like, you're an idiot. Like, how could you fall for that? (laughs) You dumbass. The The best best line. line. What was your best line? My best line, um, well, the first one was from, like, Arya and the Hound, and, and he's like, you left me to die. And she's like, I robbed you first. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. that? I'm like, no. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. And then my second one was um, when Sansa was like, what do dragons eat anyway? And she's like, whatever they want, bitch. It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> So much sass. Yeah, so much sass. Um, my best line is gonna go to it was a really cool line from Cersei when she's sitting on the throne and she's talking to Euron and he's like but I wanna fuck you she says yeah. if you want a whore you can pay for one if you want a queen and ha and I was like yas put that on a shirt bitches <laughs> <laughs> I loved it yeah it, it was, was so good her lines were really so good powerful. this episode yeah I loved it thank you to game of thrones for coming back i'm so happy i'm sad that it's only five more episodes but we're gonna be along the entire ride so make sure you guys stay tuned i just want to take this moment to thank our patrons of the episode our rewinder squad kate we have our lit rewinders tina ann sarge and serena and our mommy rewinders tamala and taya thanks guys Thanks, guys. And if you would like to join our Patreon family, check us out at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind. If you join, you'll get access to all things recap, rewind, exclusive contests, content, and updates. And also be sure you guys are checking us out on all of our socials, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, and Facebook. Make sure you guys are staying connected to join the conversation. Like, subscribe, follow, review, and comment. Like I said, make sure you guys are connecting with us before and after the episode so we can talk about it in our podcast. Make sure you guys are staying engaged with Recap Rewind. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.